Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, M.D. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health for Every Day. Our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. Of course, AM Impact on Your Health is heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, well, it is a Friday version show. It is a get em up out of town version, as we usually like to say on these Fridays. Um, I'm going to close off and bring to a conclusion my discussion of uh, vitamin C. We kicked that off on Monday, and uh, but this phone line is wide open for any of you out there who'd like to come in and take over and set the agenda. Anything on your mind in the form of a question or a comment is okay with me. Remember to do that, of course, is 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. And uh, we'll get to some vitamin uh, C chit-chat right after our first break. Talking about our lineup of guests, by the way, really enjoyed having, did you not enjoy too, uh, John Michael on our show. On Wednesday, John Michael, of course, the creator, the founder of Love Street Living Foods. What a title, but uh, it's alive, folks. It, uh, that company is doing well. It's about ready to uh, launch, so to speak, and uh, and go nationwide, but in the specialty stores. It looks like um, um, Whole Foods is going to take it coast to coast. And uh, his two premier and signature products continue to be the uh, chocolate spread, as well as the chocolate box. Anyway, we went through a discussion of how it all came about. Uh, I seem to have recalled most of it after having been refreshed. Uh, many of you had just met him for the first time. Hopefully, you'll take him up on his offers. Uh, get a hold of him two ways, so as to be able to uh, feel that we've done uh, John Michael a great uh, service in his absence. He uh, left the phone number. Uh, he says, give me a call about any of his products. Of course, about his uh, real love, which is a physical fitness connection. I'm a personal trainer and personal advisor with respect to health. That number is 412-381-1867. And then, of course, the website. I've been all over that website. Interesting place. That's uh, really, uh, Love Street Living Foods dot com. LoveStreetLivingFoods.com. Go on to it and uh, just browse around the entire website. You'll find a whole bunch of information and product awaiting you. Um, mentioned, uh, of course, way into the future, our uh, guest in August, <laughs> towards the end of August, right before school, and I guess so appropriate because uh, we'll be in school on that day with none other than James Roberts. Uh, cardiologist extraordinaire from the Toledo, Ohio area, but uh, most known for his collaboration with Dr. Stephen Sinatra. These two cardiologists uh, wrote a book. I continue to uh, support that book with respect to uh, a must-read and a must-own, just, just to have for your own protection, especially if you're being managed significantly by your PCP. And... Um, and he just doesn't seem to understand you and what you might want to get accomplished. Well, uh, Reversing Heart Disease Now is the book I'd recommend for anybody in that situation. And uh, it sits on my desk prominently. And uh, many of you who come in say, yes, I, I know it. I have that book. Now, just uh, yesterday, we inked another guest going to be here with us much sooner. You know him, too. Uh, he always, uh, well, when he takes for the airways here with us, he always gets you excited. His name is Dr. Cass Ingram. Uh, it's been a while since Cass has been with us, and uh, I've attempted to try to con contact him unsuccessfully, and lo and behold, his publicist contacted me. 
Cash is going to be with us next Wednesday talking about, well, he's the king of oregano. Don't you know that? Uh, and so uh, anything you want to know about oregano and would like to ask, I'm sure he'll have a topic in mind, but uh, he gets into answering all sorts of questions about oregano. Uh, and, of course, um, with respect to uh, those products, we are definitely um, uh, one of the premier carriers of the entire line simply because of Cass's influence on me and on you. Uh, he's been such a frequent guest here. And here he is right here in the middle of July, going to be with us next Wednesday. So guest-wise, at least for now, that's uh, a new addition. I thought I'd bring that to you. Um, some of those items, remember, talked about the um, uh, glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate. Uh, it is not harmful to you in any way at all. Uh, glucosamine and chondroitin used in combination, especially in joint issues, uh, and especially in arthritic conditions with knee and hip and so forth, gain prominence uh, by use, uh, by the, and is used by uh, just scores of conventional doctors, especially orthopedic doctors. And so um, they had a caller uh, this, this uh, Monday, I believe, uh, telling us that uh, they're his doctors had advised him not to take uh, this uh, chondroitin component uh, because it could be harmful to his blood pressure. And I'd never heard such a thing. And as I reported to you on Wednesday before we went to our guest, uh, I searched high and low and could not find any negative reference with respect, especially cardiac. Uh, the only reference I did find was in the case of chondroitin sulfate. There was a cardiac reference uh, for sure, but it wasn't a negative reference. It was a positive uh, reference saying that the, chondro the chondroitin sulfate component, the ground up chicken bone cartilage component, because that's what chondroitin sulfate is derived from and put in these tablets, uh, it actually is protective. It's cardioprotective because of its ability to aid in the repair and protection of the lining of arteries. So hope I have uh, answered that question enough. We'll put it to rest and let it go at that. Uh, also mentioned uh, the issue of the, uh, boy, we did cover it last week uh, when we talked about uh, sugars and sugar sweeteners and the fructose connection. I just thought that it was interesting that uh, uh, and for one of the ingredients in the John Michael's products has been uh, agave instead of sugar. And uh, when we brought it up, he was well aware of the fructose issue. And I think the way he answered the question about his particular product is the quantity of, of it is so low. I think he talked about five grams in uh, one of his bars when we've already said that uh, you can have up to 25 grams a day of fructose in any form and really not have it be harmful. So uh, with that in mind, I think uh, he was uh, quite prepared for that as a question. Um, about rounds that one out. Why don't we do this? Why don't we take a short break? When we come back, we're going to bring all these points about vitamin C together so we can uh, put this little baby to rest in terms of making your vitamin C uh, uh, reference material uh, as up-to-date as I can bring it. Uh, if in the course of that you want to ask a question about the vitamin C, about anything on your mind, 412-825-6262. We will be back in a moment.
Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit the Spirit, convenient, affordable, and delicious. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. You become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting-edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health here on this Friday. Get a mop out of time version of the show. Gloomy as it is outside right now. No, it's supposed to be a warm weekend. I'm really not, um, I haven't checked. Maybe you can tell me where we stand with the sun this weekend. Uh, but we'll brighten up around here. Anything on your mind today is okay with me. 412-825-6262. We'll get you on in here and see what's on your mind. That's 412 412- Eight two five six two six two. Now uh, we kick this discussion off on Monday. It's something that comes up each and every time I'm meeting new patients. We're always going to do a discussion of antioxidants, antioxidation. Uh, I had mentioned to you before these words are extremely powerful and have quite a bit of significance associated with them. And so, uh, although we may throw it out like a um, uh, a single cent word or a nickel word, these are quarter, half dollar, silver dollar words that uh, are processes in the body that can be, well, in one case, uh, we're talking about oxidation, extremely harmful, and uh, we're talking about antioxidation, extremely beneficial. So this oxidation issue occurring at the level of the cell membrane is the basic underlying mechanism in all cell death. Damage occurs when free radicals are given the opportunity. Free radicals having an uh, additional electron out there that make it unstable, and literally those free radicals um, are able to uh, provoke a process of oxidation at the level of the cell membrane. Anything you can do to not allow this oxidation mechanism to occur is going to be extremely health beneficial, and this has led to the appreciation over a long period of time that uh, vitamin C, a pretty interesting antioxidant, is a nice way of handling this oxidation problem. In fact, you're able to cancel out most, well, many, if not most, of all of these this oxidation damage occurring at the level of the cell membrane with daily amounts of vitamin C. But there's a responsibility there on the part of uh, myself and uh, edu- in educating you, allowing you to be a much better consumer in your selection of antioxidants, and in particular our discussion on Monday, uh, which we're going to complete now in the next few minutes, has to do with how do we make that education process pay off for you and make certain that the uh, kind of uh, antioxidants, in particular vitamin C, that you choose is going to do the job for which you have selected it. And I just think that uh, uh, too much has been swept under the rug, not mentioned enough. Uh, In the circles that I travel, there is some basic knowledge and understanding of vitamin C that I certainly share with patients who come to visit me here in the office. And uh, every so often, and it's been a while, uh, that I needed to share with you as listeners to this program. So on Monday we talked about but there, well, there, are, there are really two issues with respect to vitamin C that need to be brought up. 
Uh, we started this discussion on Monday talking about uh, both of them. Uh, just in, in a recap form, the two issues that need to be addressed to allow you, the consumer, to purchase a product that is able to handle the job that you'd like it to be able to do and give you the antioxidant uh, uh, potential that you would deserve in purchasing such a product are two. Number one is that it be non-corn derived. We're talking about vitamin C now. Vitamin C is 99.9% .9 of the time corn derived. And I know that just shocks people to, for them to uh, come to an understanding that the, that, that the, the main source for vitamin C is corn syrup. Now hold that thought. we got somebody banging down the door to come on in here. Come on in the store. You're with me. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Get the nasty with the pitchforks and the, and the, and the uh, axes. Ah, how you doing, Danville? Are we coming through loud and clear down there in Virginia? Fabulous. Well, you know, I talked to a couple of people about this on that chat forum a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, ecological formulas, you know those guys, right? They're one of the producers of a non-corn derived. I know them. I know them very well. Yeah. What is it, cassava root or something? Uh, cassava root, which is, I don't really understand, although they say, tell me it's potato related. It's in the potato family, whatever that is. But uh, as long as the source has not been touched, by human hands and genetic modifiers, and evidently cassava root is untouched, then uh, whatever you derive in the way of uh, the vitamins and minerals and so forth are biologically active. That's the point. So ecological formulas were one. I'll give you another company, uh, Perk. You ever hear Perk, P-E-R-Q-U-E? No. Perk is a company that makes a non-corn derived form of vitamin C. I'll also give you another company, because well, it's a company we really carry their product here in the office, and that's called a company called uh, Bioimmune. A uh, good friend of ours, Sir Arnold Takimoto, literally manufactures stuff. Uh, started with beets. I understand beets are now a problem. They are genetically modified. I will guarantee you that any product that Arnold puts together would not be of a corn-derived nature. So those are three companies that just right off the bat stick out like a sore thumb. When you go to the store of listeners, and I'm sure Danville, you're now uh, brought up to speed on this, yeah. and you look at a um, at a vitamin C on on the shelf, if you don't find any mention at all about the source of that vitamin C, you can it's, just assume well, it's corn derived. It's corn derived. Well, yes. Now, what happened to? I had talked to a guy who's got a PhD. He's a biochemist. And I remember I asked him about that. I said, well, I know a doctor up in uh, near Pittsburgh who's, uh, who's, you know, always talks about the non-corn derived tea. He's a, and he, I believe he's, he's an Indian guy from India. And he goes, well, it's the same thing. I said, well, it is. maybe <laughs> as far as technically, but I believe they said they're having a problem now with the bees because they know or can sense that those flowers are not, They've been modified somehow. Um, did we not? I think I've heard about that at yeah, point here's, time. here's the point to make, and um, and I would not be surprised if the biochemists uh, would uh, say, "Well, what are you talking about? I've never heard of such a thing." Here, here's the area. That's what it's, it said. Yeah. Yeah. It's the exact. Uh, this form of vitamin C um, that's made and derived from corn is the exact same molecule as vitamin right. C. So your friend, or however. You came across this gentleman you're having a discussion with. I think technically is absolutely correct. Same molecular weight, same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens and oxygen. It's vitamin C. The what? problem is, it may be, but it is not biologically active. It is a dud. It's sort of a, an opened Coca-Cola bottle gone flat. You know what I mean? It just doesn't have any zing to it. And it can't carry on its antioxidation properties without that zinc. Something happens in this genetic modification process that renders the product, although it's the same molecularly, it's not the same uh, in a bioactivity sort of way. So that's how you weigh in on that product with the, whoever you speak to. In the circles that I travel, this is universally known. This is uh, this is as uh, Common and understanding as a uh, as a uh, water supplies and and fluoride and mercury being harmful. This is an issue 
that in the doctors that I know is, uh, well, it's just common well, knowledge. I can, I can compare it two ways. I can compare it this way. Okay, I used to be an avid golfer. Hey, the wood woods, you know, the wood yeah. driver. <laughs> now they're all metal. The ball, and the metal woods hit the ball. However, the, the metal wood has a different effect to the ball. So I kind of put it that way, that the, you know, the non, the non, uh, the modified product, it, yes, it works. It works in a biological way. It gives you more bang for the buck. The regular I like one that. I love that right. term, bang for the buck. I think that's a good way of putting it. That I got from you. I got that from you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I use that phrase a lot, and I can understand how it's easily picked up on. But uh, you're the much better consumer now when you go out. So you found ecological pro formulas. Oh, yeah. Make yes. that so product. Can, that's uh, exactly uh, right. There is it. Perk, and by the way, if anybody else knows of a product uh, that bespeaks of, um, of, of having a non-corn-derived form, oh, let us know because I sort of have a running list for right now, and uh, I'm always uh, ready to add an additional product. I always like to promote any company who well, has used science to the nth degree, and this appears to be the one, and I, I'm not going to cast aspersions upon uh, the companies that don't. But uh, because Levy, corn Levy. syrup is cheap, it's really inexpensive. What is that other C, that Levy lipoceric? What is that? Now, is that uh, lipo C. Now, uh, that was interesting because I, Dr. Levy is an extremely intelligent guy. I had him on my show, and he makes lipo C, which is the other component about vitamin C, and we're going to get to it in a second, which is the fact that it's water-soluble, right. and it's very poorly absorbed. Well, Dr. Levy was really adept at being able to put together a product that conquered that and made the vitamin C fat soluble. There are only a couple yeah. companies that do that, okay? Yeah. But when I asked him, and I did ask him, about the uh, issue of the genetically modified and the corn derived, he didn't think it had any merit at all. So I just, I didn't, uh, look, the gentleman, I think, is a heck of a lot smarter than I am. Well, what is it made out of? What is the lysocerex being made out of? It's a corn-derived product. It's a corn-derived oh. product. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? So, uh, good on the one hand, it's fully absorbable. I say it's not optimal on the other hand. In fact, it's not just not optimal. It's, I, I, I've got serious um, issues with, with with this salient scientific point. And I'll stick with it, and I hope I have um, opened your... Oh, it looks like I have in your case, Dan, though, opened your horizons, and I hope I do the same for other listeners. Thank you. Very right on uh, today with your comments. Yep. And uh, hang in there because we're going to be talking about the fat-soluble component in just a second. Okay? Right. Thanks, Doc. You have a good one, buddy. You have a great weekend, too, Danville. Okay. Take Bye -bye. care of those six kids of yours. <laughs> okay, Danville checks in. And, um, yeah, he picked up on the point of this corn-derived issue, really. Um, uh, if you know of another product out there that uh, bespeaks, you have one, if your form of vitamin C uh, blatantly describes that it's uh, where it's derived from, and uh, they do blatantly describe it when it is a non-corn derived a product, uh, let me know. Uh, so far, I've got three on the, on the agenda, uh, Ecological Formulas, Perk, Rush Jaffe's company, uh, and I would expect Rush Jaffe, a brilliant uh, scientist, to, to know that. And he does, and he makes a product that's... Uh, non corn derived. And then my good friends from all talking motor. You know, it's time to bring Arnold back. There's a time he was on my show like well, a couple times a month. And then he got really involved with a project out of the country and although I talk to him very occasionally, uh, it's time to bring him back. Let him let him add some more ammo. He's well he was my original tutor when it came to the vitamin C issue anyway. Okay. So that's the vitamin C with respect to where it's derived. Let's do this. Take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the other property, this water solubility problem. It is a problem. Those of you who take a lot of vitamin C, you already know about the problem. Uh, you're going to that bathroom a lot. Let's see what you mean in a moment. Be right back. Talk to you then. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. 
It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow. It seems to be reasonable enough that no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Have you been to the doctor lately? Was the cake top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, the Truth of Spirit. The blessings of Truth of Spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit parade product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but Truth of Spirit help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Truth of Spirit, a blessing. For your good health, Fruit of the Spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugar. That's 1-800-442-3793. For your good health, call them now, 1-800-442-3793. Hey, good morning, and welcome back to AM Impact on Your Health on this Friday version, this get them up out of town version of the show. We're just chit-chatting away here. We're talking about vitamin C, and um, I feel rather emotional about this, this uh, kind of discussion. Um, uh, as I say, it really does take place the majority of times, and I'm meeting with patients in my office. Thought I'd share a bit with you, talking about vitamin C, making you a better educated consumer, able to purchase these products and have the assurance that you're doing it right, labeled readers that you are. So, okay, vitamin C. After, I think we can conclude talking about the, the, where it's derived from. And uh, you can check me out on this, as I say, in the circle that I travel in. Um, um, all the doctors know about that property. Let it pass on to you. This second component has to do with solubility. And that vitamin C is innately, in a natural form, a water-soluble vitamin. As such... It is very poorly absorbed. I mean extremely poorly absorbed. They say somewhere around 3 to 5% of the amount that you take in actually gets into the bloodstream, and I don't think that many of you are counting on that. Uh, however, you absolutely know that to be a fact because if you take any significant amounts, and I'll even say doses of uh, 3,000 milligrams a day, which really isn't all that much, but uh, there are many of you out there who attempt and try to take that amount of vitamin C a day. You're noticing something, are you not? And um, you got to hit about the 3,000 milligram mark for you to begin to notice. And what you notice is the stool becomes at least loose. And if you start increasing the dose much beyond the point where the stool is loose, you're going to have frank diarrhea. It's going to be, it's going to be very um, prominent diarrhea, as a matter of fact. All that is is uh, the amount of vitamin C that doesn't get, it absor doesn't get absorbed and remains in the intestinal tract produces an osmotic load that draws water to it, and that osmotic load ultimately has to be expelled, has to be gotten rid of, and as such, uh, you notice that during a bowel movement that has that characteristic and quality to it. So the points here are, how do you get enough vitamin C? I mean, if you go buy the right product and you can't, and you're only absorbing uh, a small portion of it, wouldn't it make sense to have a product that actually allows you to absorb all, almost all, if not completely all, 
of the milligrammage that you take in. And that's, in fact, uh, what um, uh, some folks have done. Uh, you mentioned a product called Lipo-C that uh, conquered this. I think we have to give credit to Sir Arnold Takimoto, who made a product called Ultra Absorbic C. And in that particular product, this is the one we carry here, because besides being non-corn derived, it is also fat soluble. And that means that you end up, whatever amount you take in, you absorb that full amount. There is no osmotic load situation that occurs in the bowel. There is no issue with diarrhea or loose stool at all because all is absorbed. Now, to give you an idea of, uh, of what that really means, I often tell patients to take, uh, and, and the product called ultra absorbency is a liquid. And, it's, uh, and you're encouraged to take it with juice because acidification of this product makes it more absorbable. Consequently, uh, drinking it in apple juice, which is recommended for any other form of juice, would be helpful in producing that acidification mechanism. But uh, in one teaspoon, there are 990 milligrams of vitamin C. And so you say, well, gee, 990 milligrams, that's not that much. And you know what? I agree. It's not that much. However, because of the equivalency of that 990 milligrams, it is the, uh, to a, a um, water-soluble form of vitamin C that you don't absorb. It's been estimated that the one milligram with the 990 milligrams is the equivalent of you trying to take 18,000 milligrams of a water-soluble form of vitamin C, which I'm going to tell you right now, you can't do. Uh, very few people who can do it and not wear a diaper, if you know what I mean. In fact, I've often said that Linus Pauling, the gentleman who brought the vitamin C issue to the forefront in the early 1990s, made the claim that he, in fact, did take up to 20,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C. And I swear, I swear, my man had to wear a diaper. <coughs> Excuse me. Here. So um, now you've got the two salient features in mind when dealing with oral vitamin C. I say two things about the forms of vitamin C that you're going to end up taking. One, it should be non-corn derived. And number two, uh, to make it the most economically um, potent form of vitamin C, the bang for the buck, that term that I guess I've raised before that Daniel picked up on, I think it needs to be fat soluble too. And then and only then can you reach these levels of extremely high antioxidant potential that I just don't think is possible with the other forms of vitamin C. And that's my story. And I'm sticking to it, especially when it comes to the oral forms of vitamin C. Now we should mention, and uh, it's something that comes up also a lot around this office are the intravenous forms of vitamin C. There are situations when you need such high doses of vitamin C, you really can't take those high doses in an oral form, even if that oral form happens to be um, a fat-soluble form, like uh, ultra perfect C that I was talking about a moment ago. So uh, why would you want to take these very large doses? By the way, large doses, to me, are um, 50,000 milligrams, 75,000 milligrams, 100,000 milligrams of this extremely safe product. I swear you can take your body weight in vitamin C, it's been said, and really no harm would come to you. It would just make your super cells more super and more antioxidant uh, capable. But when it comes to the two reasons for why you would need these high doses of vitamin C, the number one reason would be as an antimicrobial. I think that's what we learned from Linus Pauling in the early 90s. He's the one that said you use vitamin C for the common cold, you know, that's viral. Uh, and we have such poor antivirals in the conventional world. I mean, our antivirals that are pharmaceutically purchasable are terrible. We've got great antibiotics, and even though there's quite a few side effects that are deleterious, 
the antimicrobial component of the antibiotics is unbelievably effective. But as effective as our antibiotics are, which are antibacterial, that's how ineffective our antivirals are with respect to the conventional world. Literally, I, I often am in amazement how extensive these medications are, these antivirals, and when you read the literature, you read things like, oh, it, it, it uh, hastens the, the um, return to normal of a cold by 24 hours. What the heck is that? I just don't understand. Anyway, that's the point is, the antivirals found in the conventional work are terrible. Linus Pauling's tip-off about the antiviral component of, um, of uh, vitamin C is well worth taking. By the way, in the day of Linus Pauling, as I think I mentioned the other day, uh, you could get any form of vitamin C you wanted. It was all biologically active. It, was, it didn't have to have a worry about whether it was corn derived or not because corn hadn't been a genetically modified yet. That happened in the mid-90s. And uh, by the time the turn of the century came around, it was to such a point that all, 100% of all corn products now are genetically modified. But that little salient point needs to be made. Anyway, even back in the day, you couldn't take enough oral to reach the doses necessary for antiviral um, um, effectiveness. Uh, that's why we say we, we need to be uh, you know, 50,000 milligram level and up. A lot of times this requires what's called a pit line so that we don't uh, really injure a peripheral vein lines are literally central lines that have peripheral access to them. And so as an antiviral, and so you would find it in, um, how about hepatitis C? Anybody with a hepatitis C out there, you would find that a much better way to approach hep C is through the use of vitamin C. Won't harm you a bit. Uh, doesn't have any toxicity issues to worry about, but it sure will knock down that viral load. And then the other viruses. We have uh, um, a lot of folks that come in having had mononucleosis as a teenager. I now find them as an adult. Uh, in the teenage years, remember what the doctor would have said to you if you had mono? Uh, they would say, uh, there's no treatment. Uh, you just get better on your own. And so you sit back and rest and don't be physically overactive until that corrects itself. That's how bad the antivirals were and how bad they still are. But uh, in our active cases of Einstein bar, we'll find uh, that EB virus, which is the virus responsible for mononucleosis, is quite responsive to vitamin C IV. And so I say that to you out there um, in the listening land, hey, think about this the next time you have even a cold, uh, let alone anything much more serious than that. Uh, the final component, and then we're going to get to this phone call, is in cancers, vitamin C is cytotoxic to cancers only. And that's another salient point that all of my colleagues know about, too. Hey, I do hear a knock on the door. Come on in the store. Hello, and welcome in. Hello there. Hey, hey Dr. Courtney. This is Jerry. Um, uh, the vitamin C topic, haven't heard you talk about it in a while, but I, I don't get to tune in all the time. Um... Do you recall a few years back, the National Institutes of Health had done a study on stage four lymphoma patients where they were giving them intravenous vitamin C? It was done in 2005. It was uh, done by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Michael Levine. He was at the NIH and NCI. These are two major institutions. It wasn't an in vivo study, though. It was an in vitro study where they used... Um, uh, vitamin uh, C to literally kill cancers and and to find out that the federal government proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that it will it's just been amazing to me ever since. I have the article in my office. I hand it out freely. Yes, I am very familiar with that study. Okay, I just wanted to bring it into the discussion. Thank you for bringing that in. I'll mention a couple more words about it. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, good point. And um, in terms of a anti-cancer agent. Um, um, for the longest time, it's, uh, as I say in the circles that I travel in, this is well known to be an effective 
anti-cancer cytotoxic agent that will only harm uh, the um, cancer. It won't harm good cells. It won't harm healthy cells. It will only have its effect on cancer. Now let's talk about that mechanism because I think it's a fascinating mechanism. And that is that um, when you give vitamin C in these high doses, as we do, uh, all cells are going to take this up into the interior of the cell, whether that cell is a healthy cell or whether it's a cancer cell. In the healthy cell, as you would expect, that uh, non corn by the way, it better be non-corn-derived vitamin C that you're giving intravenously, and the sources of that are very few. But nonetheless, it's still attainable. And when taken up into a regular cell, that cell becomes a super cell. It can't be harmed by anything. And so it really is very protective of the cells that are normal cells that are functioning just fine. Um, but the, the story goes on. Because just as vitamin C is taken up into the interior of a healthy cell, it is also taken up into the interior of a cancer cell any cancer. And uh, inside of a cancer cell, we have a completely different environment. And that environment is that there is a vo very poor oxygen to nil oxygen content in a cancer cell, when in fact in regular cells it is very oxygen rich uh, and, uh, and quite uh, potent amounts of oxygen, I might, I might add. So inside a cell that has a poor oxygen environment, instead of vitamin C being a very potent antioxidant and being cell protective, it changes roles and it becomes a major oxidant, an intracellular oxidant, by utilizing small amounts of hydrogen and minimal amounts of oxygen that's available in making a product out of the two that literally is found in every medicine cabinet of every person who's listening to my voice right now. The product that is made inside of a cancer cell when there's an oxygen-poor environment through the introduction of vitamin C into that cell is called H2O2. By the way, it has another name. I think you may know it by its other name, is called hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is lethal to that cell and will kill it. That's the story. Thank you very much for the call. Let's do this. Take a short break. When we come back, a couple other few words about it. You may want to call up 412-825-6262 to get in on this vitamin C discussion or any discussion that you want to originate. We've got... Uh, we're going to be coming around that uh, final lap when we return, but still plenty of time to hear from you. Be back in a moment. Want to help your family eat healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu in wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fries, pizza, and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit career <coughs> made from fresh fruit made to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones the blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, 
Success doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to Impact on Your Health. Here's on K here, here on KHB 620. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. Of course, today's a Friday version, a get em up out of town version of the show today where we're spending some time with you. Uh, rounding out your uh, knowledge and understanding of vitamin C, making you a much better consumer for it, maybe bringing up some points, some salient points, that uh, really will help uh, make you decide better on how you want to be treated with respect to your own health conditions. The point brought up just a moment ago by the caller, um, I just, in the, uh, while we're at commercial break, I went into my files and I pulled out that article. Believe you me, that article is within arm's reach because this subject does come up a lot. But uh, the article, uh, and it was published in um, August, it was reviewed in June 1st of 2005, it was published uh, at the NIH, National Institute of Health, Bethesda, Maryland. This became a very um, interesting article, especially when Sir Arnold Takimoto was involved, because for the longest time, the mechanism of how vitamin C could work in a cancer protocol, many of the which we do here at this office, uh, was common knowledge to us, but we weren't really, up, uh, uh, we didn't appreciate how the conventional medical world was able to handle this information. They didn't seem to handle it well. Oncologists would laugh and uh, think that, oh, well, that's just the dumbest thing they ever heard. These are the same oncologists that uh, uh, would uh, turn around and put some pretty powerful poisons in the patients under the uh, crucifix of, I'm here to help, and uh, we won't get any further into that discussion <laughs> right now. Uh, but nonetheless, um, we literally fell off of our chairs in 2005 when this article became available because to, to see that the NIH and the NCI, the National Cancer Institute, NIH, National Institute of Health, the most uh, prestigious research arm in our entire government actually published this article. Um, and if you ever come in and ask for a copy of it, I'll be more than happy to give you a copy of this article. Uh, the title of the article, I'm reading it right now, says uh, pharma, pharmacologic ascorbic acid, that's vitamin C, ascorbic acid concentrations selectively kill cancer cells. Action as a pro-drug to deliver hydrogen peroxide to tissues. So in its own scientific phraseology, it confirmed, and the article is a lengthy one, it confirmed what we already knew. And the mechanism that was elaborated by Dr. not Mike Levine, his name was Mark Levine, still is by the way. Mark Levine uh, was a very good uh, rendition of what we already knew it to be the mechanism too. Now, um, a little funny aside from this, I mean, to have the federal government's uh, prestigious institutions prove beyond a shadow of doubt that uh, vitamin C can be used in the setting of cancer. I'm sure it wasn't uh, received well. In fact, I'm pretty positive it was not received well by the administrators of both the NIH and the NCI. I, I just, I can't see. Well, we knew that uh, Dr. Mark Levine was called in the office, and essentially uh, the conversation, no, I'm paraphrasing this, of course, I wasn't in the office, but I'm told the conversation went something like, oh, Dr. Levine, very, very fine work on your study concerning vitamin C and uh, cytotoxic properties, synthetically killed cancer cells. It was so interesting to us 
that we're going to let you begin phase one trials of this vitamin C. <laughs> For which uh, Dr. Levine, I'm told, responded, what do you mean phase one? Phase one trials, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, are animal months. They're animal trials. He said, we're talking about vitamin C. This is not harmful to anybody. It won't hurt you. And they said, Dr. Levine, phase one trials, thank you very much. And with that handwriting on the wall, what we're told is uh, Dr. Levine just left NIH. And uh, I've heard a pockets of him surfacing. I'd love to bring him on the show. Can't seem to find him to get a hold of him to be able to do that. I may even try a little harder. Maybe we, what I'm trying to hook up is Sir Arnold talking Moda and uh, Dr. Mark Levine. I want to put them in a room, give them some Coke and some chips, and just not let them out until the two of them raise every possible issue with respect to vitamin C because I believe these are the two most knowledgeable people on vitamin C in the entire world. And they had yet, the last discussion with Sir Arnold, they had yet to have met. I'm hoping they need to. Anyway, copy this article is available at any time. Uh, and those of you out there who have cancer yourself or you have a loved one with cancer and you're not really too much into the conventional medical model involving chemotherapy, um, this may be some article that you would like to have in order to find the kind of treatment protocols that are much more acceptable to you. Okay. There you have it. Uh, the vitamin C story, I think, is fairly complete at this point. So next time you're out within the um, uh, healthcare community, the health stores, be the label reader that we know you are and have a better understanding of how to take the vitamin C story that we've just told. It's not a story. It is fact. And use it to your best advantage getting the product that you, that you need to be able to get to provide the physiological benefit for why you're taking the thing to begin with. So uh, this issue of taking corn-derived vitamin C in high doses, um, questionable. If you get a benefit from it, wonderful. I, I think that's great. But boy, the benefit could be so much more improved if you keep these two salient points in mind. Number one, is it corn-derived? Number two, is it has it been made fat? Soluble. I should mention too that the issue of uh, um, the fat soluble uh, forms of this, in particular, the product that uh, I mentioned before, ultra absorbic C. Um, whenever um, you take ultra absorbic C, you should be taking all of the other supplements that you would normally be taking during the day. You should take right at the same time that you take a product like ultra absorbic C because literally. Because of the fat solubility of the vitamin C product, it literally acts like a hoover and allows you to suck up all of the nutrients that you may be taking uh, that aren't fat soluble and are water soluble. They will be better absorbed at the same time that you're taking the fat soluble product than they would at any other time of the day. And so that's just a little trick that we teach our patients. Uh, when taking uh, their supplements to make certain that they take the vitamin C. As they're taking their other supplements, there's also a caution. I say to you out there, this is a very real caution, and that is if you take any prescription medication, you more than likely are having absorption issues with that. You're not absorbing the whole amount of that substance either. The problem becomes if you begin to take a fat-soluble form of vitamin C, like this ultra-absorbing C product, you're going to get, for maybe the first time in your entire history with that drug, you're going to get all of it getting absorbed, and you may not be able to handle that. You've worked at a level of a dose that maybe was only 10% absorption. Well, if you take the, um, the medication, with a fat-soluble form of vitamin C, you're now going to get 99% absorbed, and that can be a problem. So we tell patients, never take your medication with uh, 
a vitamin C, a fat-derived form, a, excuse me, a non-corn-derived fat-soluble form of vitamin C. Take your vitamins, take your minerals, take all that, but you take the medication at a time at least an hour and a half to two hours after you've taken that uh, uh, product, and that way you'll get the regular amount of drug that you were supposed to get with no problem. Boy, if you take some of these other things at the same time, uh, if you take a fat soluble product, it has the potential, we'll say that much, it has the potential of causing much more of a problem uh, than you'll ever want to contend with. So that's another precaution when it comes to taking uh, fat soluble forms of anything. Uh, and, uh, and we'll let it go at that. Hey, we're literally coming around to the, the final corner, 412. 8256262. That's 412-8256262. You got a call uh, in mind. Make it happen now, and we'll be able to uh, get you just before we go off the air. Thought that uh, this will be a good way of ending ending this. Uh, talking about uh, we do, do so much of talking about the uh, issue of organic foods, how they're grown, and the like. And uh, this showed up in a. In a uh, publication was it? Uh, Prevention Magazine, okay? And it's called The Dirty Dozen, The 12 Dirtiest Fruits and Vegetables uh, in a whole bunch of ways. Not just dirty in terms of a need to be clean, but of course could be sprayed with a whole what's called toxic soup of chemicals and pesticides to get certain products to your local supermarket. Here are the worst, the dirtiest dozen, and uh, and so knowing these make you a better consumer too. Number one on the list. Hey, I didn't know it was celery. It is celery, and it is the dirtiest of the dirty dozen. The next sort of new this one, it's peaches on the dirty dozen, um, and and I'm told that I think pesticide wise it occupies the number one slot. Number three. Strawberries, number four, apples, number five, blueberries, number six, nectarines, number seven, bell peppers. That's sort of a surprise. Be careful. How about this? Number eight, also a surprise. Number nine, kale, number ten, cherries, number eleven, potatoes, number twelve, and 40 grapes. There you got the real dirty dozen. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Till then, this is Dr. Dennis Court saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health.